Right, basic iron swing. Can you get your iron swing basic, easy, repeatable? Get the ball up in the air, decent strikes towards target. That's your goals with these things. Let's talk about some basic ideas, some fundamentals. If you're a beginner golfer, this will help you. If you've been playing for years, going back to these basics sometimes can just rejig the system into hitting some better shots. Let's talk basic iron swing, get you playing some better golf. Let me know if these basic ideas help you come the end of the video by hitting that comment section up down below. If it helped you as well, maybe consider subscribing. Got loads more help coming. And if you're already subscribed and you want to catch up on each video, make sure you've got that bell icon turned on so you don't miss an upload. A little question for you up there. Are your irons a strong or weak part of your game in that little box? Back to the video. Right, we need this golf club hitting the ground in a certain place with a certain loft presented at a certain speed. So let's start with how you should set the club face up and hold the club. So let's start with setting this club down on the ground. We want the lie of the club to work for you. So I see a lot of people having the toe, this end, long way in the air, so handle very low. Let's go and get that club relatively flat on the floor. Just need to get that finger slightly under the toe end. So we don't want toe down, we don't want too much toe up. We want the leading edge of the club, this front groove, at a right angle to the line you want that ball to start on, or generally your target line. And then we also want, you'll notice with lofted clubs and it'll change slightly with different lofts but the way this club this is an eight iron is set is that the handle is slightly forward of the middle of the face almost in line with the leading edge to slightly forward so we'll come to ball position in a second but if i've got the ball somewhere near the middle of my stance that puts the handle just on the inside of my left leg at setup when it comes to your hold how are you going to hold this club it's very similar to every other hold video i've made and you'll see loads online i'm going to have the thumb down the right of center of that grip i'm going to see two to three knuckles on my left hand have the club in the same position through my left hand bottom of the fingers top of the palm right hand again i don't mind with an iron if you interlock overlap or ten finger but i want the right hand relatively through the fingers going up into the bottom of the palm and then over on top of that left hand. Again with grip, I've got full videos on grip, which I'll maybe put some links in in the video as we go. Now, next part that you've got to think about with grip, the beauty with the iron is I can hold this eight iron at the top and hit a certain distance, but I can do all those fundamentals that we've started with there with a grip down the handle. If I wanted to hit some shots where I'm taking off some speed and taking off some distance. The beautiful thing with irons, generally, certainly ones with a bit of loft, is that I can use them more creatively. You don't have to be so black and white as I need to hold it up there or down there. Where generally with your driver, even though you can still do that, people are holding them at the top and just whacking them. So let's talk a little bit of ball position before we go into stance. I've got an eight iron here and I've got a three iron here. So very big difference in the angle of the face, so the loft. So how much that club is pointing up to the sky or not. I will play the lower lofted club, the straighter faced, more forward in my stance than I would play the higher lofted club. So I always think of ball position as like a playing field. With a club that goes up in the air, a lofted club, I can play from any position from my right foot to my left, subject to how high or low I want that ball to go. So the further back it goes, handle forward, takes loft off. They say iron's going lower. But remember, I've got loft to be able to take off. If I push it forwards, it's adding loft. It's bending that face more up to the sky. This might make me get over trees when I still want to try and make some distance. When it comes to the lower lofted irons, I'm going to generally have a smaller playing field. So I'm going to be playing from just inside my left heel to the center, to maybe a fraction back if I'm in trouble and I want to get it under trees. But taking loft off this club is only going to make it much harder for me to get any lift has its time and place but not as a general rule so think about the loft on your club and your playing field more loft you can play from your back foot to your front foot less loft middle to front foot general rule of thumb medium iron seven iron anything that gets up in the air eight iron nine iron middle of your stance to slightly forward as the loft comes off push it up towards that front foot each one of you will have a slightly different position try not to be too black and white with the idea of ball position because depending on how much power you put in what loft you deliver i've seen average players play good free hands from the middle of their stance and for me unless i'm manipulating high i'm always going to help myself out with less loft pushing it forwards so standing to the ball you want to get your feet around shoulders width apart again use your balance with your width for stance you can be wider or narrower depending on the surroundings you're on but general rule of thumb around your hip distance apart with your feet 
or approximately around shoulders. When it comes to stance, you wanna try and just make sure you've got the weight on that balls of your feet, leaning forward, shoulders just slightly forward of your toes, trying to retain some kind of posture angle that's gonna allow you to move with some kind of level of balance. So biggest issue I see with stance, often with irons, is quite low hands, rounded in the back, and that refers back to our toe, how you want that club set up. If you get that toe up in the air, just think either these clubs aren't fit for me and I need a custom fit, go and see your pros, or maybe I should be standing more to the club. The amount of students I used to say, let's have you standing up to the club rather than you standing that club into your setup. So the thing with backswings when it comes to irons, now if you want an overview of a basic golf swing, uh, I've done a video on that, maybe look in the card up there to give you the basic ideas of what you're trying to do with your swing. But when it comes to an iron, again, you could be much more creative with how you're swinging this club. So my basic swing, trying to hit a ball towards target is gonna go X back and X through. So same principles of every shot. I'm getting the club over my right shoulder, over my left. I'm moving weight onto right side, onto left as I go through. All those basic principles you'll see in that basic golf swing video I've made, which hopefully you've checked out. But what I'm also gonna try and get more skilled at doing with an iron is really understanding what speed I'm swinging at, to what loss I'm delivering, and using my length of swing to help me hit a distance. Think about it, an eight iron, I'm trying to hit a precise distance compared to your longer clubs where you're generally trying to hit them as far as you can. So if I want this one to go shorter, I can hit a nine iron. If I wanted this to go further, I can hit a seven iron. But sometimes there's gaps in between and shots you need to be finding with these to try and hit that precise distance and target. So when I'm practicing with a medium iron or any of my irons for your basic learning of your swings, I'm gonna do some where I swing half and see what happens to my ball flight and strike. I'm gonna see what happens to my distance and how I could use that in a round. So that ball went lower, it went about 100 yards. That's a great shot into the wind. I'm gonna do some where I hit the ball hard, maybe ball back, play with my ball position, and I'm gonna hold the follow through off. That ball's gone in lower, but with loads more speed. That's gone up to the 145, 150, which is where I carry this iron. But a very different trajectory to my standard ball position nearer the middle, basic over right shoulder over left swing there's three different shots i've hit with one club that i will use in a round nearly every time i play so back swing you want to be thinking of the basics moving weight onto right foot onto left coming off right foot over right shoulder over left shoulder but have some variations of those of those basics shorter follow throughs shorter back swings with shorter follow throughs fast short follow throughs to get that punch shot. The beauty with these clubs is you can be creative with them. So downswing, coming in to hit the ball, what should I be thinking about if anything? Well that's going to be very reflective of what you bring to the table. Common mistakes with irons is thinning, fatting, so hitting the ground first and catching the ball um, a little bit late on the way up and catching it out the bottom or topping it by catching it way too early in the ground and coming up and coming over the ball. Simple idea with your iron play is you want to have the feeling of hitting the ball and then the ground second. Now what's interesting with that is if you actually look at high speed footage that isn't what happens. The iron interacts with the ground before it touches the ball but the feeling, the sensation you have in your body and the feeling and thought that works for so many students who do struggle from those thin and fat is of having that feeling of hitting the ball and then the ground second. Simple drills to try and get that to work for you. I put a ball here about five, six inches behind the one I'm gonna hit from my normal ball position. I'm gonna make a few swings where I feel like my pressure starts on my left foot and then as I come in to hit the ball, move it forward to keep that angle of a descent with the iron on the way down to move that low point forwards. So gate drill next, so I'm going to hit this middle one. Um, you can see from this mat, I've actually got a little bit of a wear in the mat here and it's all generally forward of this gate. By putting this gate here, it allows me to focus on getting my club to hit this ball and I want you to feel like you're moving that mat in front of the ball. Simple ways of doing that as you start your downswing, feel like your pressure's moving forward as you rotate and feel like you're pushing that club out in front of you to not interact with the ground before the gate. 
This will absolutely start to crisp up your strikes, get rid of that bottoming out early, hitting the ground fat, or just missing the ground and coming up and hitting the ball a little bit clean. And then my favorite drill, this one works for so many golfers, set yourself in a normal ball position with your medium iron, and then just simply push it outside your left toe, bring the club back to where it would be if the ball was in its regular position, try and hit that ball, it's gonna force you to move up to it, shift up to it. Don't worry about the direction if it's not spot on because your club pass will be moving, but a great way for you to try and push forwards, get that strike, feeling like it's ball then ground second. Get those crisp, pure struck irons. Follow through. So where you finish, where does that club end up? And where do you end up? Basic rule of thumb, you want club over left shoulder. So my hands are over my left shoulder right foot up on its toe, hip shoulders all turned around to facing the target or even beyond. So once you've got your basic follow through happening and working for you, you've got that shift of the weight onto the left foot, helping you move that strike forward as well. I want you to play with your follow through. So you can go standard ball position, make a cut off follow through. So hold it off. You'll see players like Tommy Fleetwood finishing in this position generally being used to get a feeling of how the club face is working as it comes through. And the hold off finish is actually trying to get the feeling of that club never turning left. So they're always going to hit the shot one way. Shorter sawn off follow throughs are great for punch shots. So moving the ball back, being creative with that ball position, handle forwards, short little follow through with a lot of speed. Again, face up to the sky, it's not come over my shoulder. That's giving me a different flight, a lower flight, a more controlled flight in some ways. Having a basic golf swing is great, gets you started, but having variations on this basic is what's gonna get you round the course playing better because you're gonna need all these shots when you get out. There's trees, there's wind, there's rain, there's bunkers, all these things you've gotta contend with. Controlling heights, playing with follow throughs, having the confidence to be more dynamic rather than so basic often makes your basic golf swing actually like a weapon rather than something that's harming you let me know if this helps in those comments down below let me know if there's something else you want me to cover in your iron swings let me know what you're good or bad at with your irons long irons short irons hit the ground still even after these tips let me know down there and we'll do more we'll try and help you get you playing some better golf thanks for watching remember if you've subscribed to the channel get that bell icon rung so you get your notifications if you haven't subscribed to the channel maybe you hit that subscribe button plenty more tips to come